Hello everyone, it's time for us to go and take a look at the M4 Mac Mini and kind of go and kind of compare it against the M2 Mac Studio and see which particular Mac is a better one for you. Now here's the thing, if you're going to go through and pick up either one of these, definitely getting a device you know, like a, the M4 model might be better for some people, but there might be some reasons why the M2 Mac Studio might be the better option for you. So we'll take a look at that throughout this whole entire video. Now if you want to pick up either one of these Macs, links will be down in the description. You can get that from there and you can help support the channel at the exact same time. Now, starting off with the exterior of both, the M2 Mac Studio that came out a couple of years ago, actually not even that long ago, it came with a pretty interesting design. And the thing I like about these particular Macs was that they look very good. You know, they don't have anything like super insane going on with them. And I do think if you were to go through and like pick up one of these types of devices, I think Apple did a really good job with the design. Now, when you look at it, the front side, the big benefit of this type of Mac is that you are basically getting that type of, you know, USB type C port, the two USB C ports, as well as the, you know, SD card slot in the front side of this particular Mac. So that is something that's actually very nice to have inside of this type of device, just because it's available for you right there. And the SD card is just built in right in. So I, I think that in and of itself is kind of a nice thing going on there too. Now, beyond that, I do think it's still a very good looking device. It's very big, so it stands up fairly high, but I think it looks beautiful and it's a very good looking machine. On the M4 Mac Mini though, on the other hand, this one is a little bit of a different story. So with this one, it's significantly smaller than the, you know, the M2 Mac Studio. So this one is substantially smaller. It's not going to be sticking out as much. And that could be a pretty big reason why some people may want to go and pick a device like that up for the most part, just because it isn't going to be this like super big expensive one. So with that being said, there are still a lot of advantages for buying something like an M4 Mac Mini. It's such a smaller footprint than the Mac Studio. You're still maintaining two USB-C ports on the front. The only disadvantage I would say is that with those USB-C ports, you know, you're not getting that SD card on the front side like the Mac Studio, but you are getting a headphone jack on the front side of the Mac Mini. So it is interesting. There is some flip-flopping going on here, but I would say when it comes down to both, both are great, but the Mac Mini is very surprising to me about just how small that thing is. Now on the top, you just have the Apple logos. On the back side, you're getting a little bit of a difference when it comes down to the port selection. So on the M2 Mac Studio, so there's two different models, the M2 Max and the M2 Ultra. If you're getting the M2 Max, you're getting four Thunderbolt 4 ports or six Thunderbolt 4 ports if you're getting the M2 Ultra. And you're also getting two USB-A ports on the M2 Max and M2 Ultra. But if you're getting the M2 Max model, you're getting two USB-C ports. On the back side of the you know M4 Mac Mini, so you're getting three Thunderbolt 4 ports on the back of the M4 model, or three Thunderbolt 5 ports on the back of the M4 Pro. And on the front side, you're getting two USB-C ports. Now, here's the thing. You're also getting HDMI ports. You're getting you know gigabit or 10 gigabit Ethernet port on the M4 Mac Mini. The M2 Mac Studio automatically comes with 10 gigabit, so you don't have to you know modify it. The Mac Studio does come with the SD card slot, though, which could be a pretty big deal for some people, depending on which way you look at it. Now, I will say personally for me, if I'm going to go through and look at these types of devices, I'm a big fan of the M2 Mac Studio. It is a little bit older now, but I do think Apple did a really good job with that type of device. And I generally do think like if you're going to go through and like pick up a type of Mac, I think that's a fairly solid option for the most part. You know, it's not a, a perfect type of device, but I think if you're going to go through and like pick up a machine, that M2 Mac Studio is a very, very good machine for the most part. It's killer. I think Apple did a really good job with it. And at the end of the day, I think if you're going to go through and pick up a device, I think that's a fairly solid option. Now, I do think with the M4 Mac Mini, for the price that you're paying for it, it is pretty surprising to me how good of a job, you know, that, that type of Mac will hold up for the next several years. So because of the situation of price tag, right? The M2 Mac Studio is basically $2,000 right now. The M4 Mac Mini is $599. So the number one thing I can kind of think about is that if you're going to look at both these devices, the M2 Mac Studio isn't necessarily like four times the device of the M4 Mac Mini. I think it's close, but I don't think it's like that. I don't think it's a big difference, to be honest. Like if you gave me both, I would be happy between both. But now that we're getting this M4 Mac Mini chipset and we're getting these types of like great chipsets and power on both, I genuinely think that if you're going to go through and get a device, like you could still have a really good performing device from something like an M4 Mac Mini. 
Like, I, I do think this is a very, very good machine, a very powerful machine at that. And I think that's a very, very important thing to keep in mind here too, because you can easily go through and still get a very powerful machine and not have to spend like an insane amount of money. And I think that is a very important thing to kind of keep in mind here. Like, why go through and just like recklessly spend a bunch of money if you don't need to, if you can get a very good, powerful machine still from something like an M4 Mag Mini. So I think that's a big thing I've been thinking about. When it comes down to the performance, the M2 Max Studio is going to be a more powerful machine, right? Most part. You're getting up to 24 core CPU on the M2 Max Studio and up to 76 core GPU on the Mac Studio, whereas on the Mac Mini, only 14 core CPU and 20 core GPU. So that's maxed out. So a maxed out Mac Studio is way, way, way more powerful than a maxed out Mac Mini. Even from the RAM perspective, if you're looking at it just from like a RAM side, you can kind of see for yourself that, you know, the Mac mini taps out at 64 gigabytes of RAM. So not that much RAM as you could probably expect. It's not the most amount of RAM of all time. Whereas on the Mac Studio, that taps out at 192 gigabytes of, of RAM. That is in and of itself a very, very big difference. Getting a Mac like that, that's going to be giving you a significantly better type of RAM experience. I mean, it, that's just going to trickle down to the performance and the power. And that is in and of itself another very, very big reason why something like an M2 Mac Studio is probably going to be the overall better performing device here than something like the Mac Mini. So when it does come down to the power side, that is in and of itself going to be a pretty big difference here and a big reason why you might want to go ahead and pick up something like an M2, you know, like an M2 Mac Studio. But I would say in my personal opinion, from a performance perspective, the Mac Mini is still very, very fast. I've been having a very good time with it. I'm not using it as my main machine, but as my side machine or whatever, like it still is like a very, very good, powerful device. I don't really have too many complaints about it when it comes down to it. But if I were like a maxed out user, let's say I was like using everything on my Mac all the time. And honestly, I'm exporting a lot of videos all the time. I'm actually probably maxed out my Mac a lot. Even for me, something like an M2 Max is still very powerful. I'm on an M1 Pro right now. I have an M1 Pro MacBook, and I still feel like this thing is very fast. I haven't really complained about this thing too much, and I think this thing is still a killer device in a lot of different ways. But if I were to look at it, and if I were to look at both, probably something like an M2 you know, Mac Studio is still going to be very fast for me. But the M4 Mac Mini is still also very, very fast. So to kind of sum up this whole entire thing, and probably kind of what I would tell you, is that if you're going to go through and you know pick up these types of devices, definitely a Mac like an M2 Mac Studio is definitely probably gonna be the faster one when it comes down to it. That one is probably gonna be the better one here. If you're going to go through and pick up a device, that one is the one that I think a majority of people would probably go and probably recommend buying just because it, you know, it is more powerful, it has more power inside of it. And I think that's the big thing to keep in mind here. Now with something like the M4 Mac Mini, I think this is a very good machine. I'm a very big fan of this type of device. I think it's very much worth buying. And I think that would be the one that I'd recommend a vast majority of people to go and buy. It's easier to buy, it doesn't cost that much money, and that one makes a lot more sense. But in my opinion, that's kind of how both these kind of compare in my personal opinion. So if you have any other thoughts or questions, please let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that would be so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out, so then.